Hi everyone, welcome to Voices to Hear. My name is Marie and I'm going to introduce you today to my friend Yuri, who cycled from Germany to Istanbul and is planning to end in Indonesia. Yuri, you have been cycling for the past few months. Can you introduce yourself real quick and roughly outline who you are, what you do and what your ma motivation is for this crazy trip? Of course, there were quite some questions, so I'm going to start with introducing myself. My name is Yuri, as you already know. I am uh, 19 years old and from the same town of Germany as Marie. And right now I am in Istanbul, which is about four months into the trip. And my motivation, well, <laughs> that's not anything special, I guess. I just finished school and didn't know what to do, yeah, university-wise or job-wise. And uh, didn't want to dive into something that I would end up not choosing in a year. So uh, I'm not sure what the actual impulse was, but uh, somehow this started. <laughs> And what impacted or who impacted your decision to leave everything behind? I guess just the possibility. There wasn't an actual push or anything. It was just, uh, okay, I could do this now. And this seems reasonable and this seems interesting. And this seems yeah, just perfect. Just the circumstances were so good that it kind of had to be done. <laughs> so you don't know anyone who ever did this before? You haven't really got a source of inspiration for oh, this? Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Even after, after I decided it, uh, I got recommended a lot of stuff like that. I think I watched half of one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very interesting. Um, if you don't mind, we can just start chronically from the beginning of your trip. How did you prepare for it and what did you pack? So I didn't really know what I should get into because, I mean, countries are so different and uh, most of the countries I've never been to. So I just relied on my, um, well, <laughs> semi-experience of camping and packed everything I already had for camping. I ordered a sleeping bag and at the beginning I even packed a tent. Just just anything that was lying around that seemed useful pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and um, did you leave anything behind on the way? Like, was there anything unnecessary which you wouldn't recommend on taking on the bike tour of this lane i don't know it's um usually you figure that out uh, along the way i met a lot of people who got rid of uh, things along the way for me it was a tent uh, <laughs> that sounds that sounds a little more harsh than it is i uh, also have a hammock and a plastic cover that you can put over it if it's uh, raining or anything like that and i've uh, before i got rid of the tent i chose to do uh, j just sleep in the hammock for a month to see if I could do it and it seemed good yeah um what was the biggest obstacle you've had to face so far <laughs> I'm not sure uh, there I, I can't really tell you tell you about any situation because so far it's it's been a quite quite easy part of the journey so I don't know yeah maybe uh, I got got sick once That was that was quite hard. So I was in Kosovo and probably ate some bad, bad eggs and um, had quite the hilly stretch in front of me. A lot of ups and downs. So that was a nice day. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> um, can you point out the contrary? What was the most beautiful thing you've seen so far? I mean... I, I can't really tell you about one situation. It's just the whole picture so far. It's um, more that anytime I, I see a beautiful view or uh, I meet, meet nice people or I guess uh, maybe drive really fast, that's one, one uh, moment that goes into the bank and uh, that kind of adds up. Same as the negative experience. It's, um, it, it's just a whole, ex a whole around experience for me. It's not like... I think about one situation in, in particular that's like, oh, that's great or that's bad because it kind of, kind of in a strange way, mushes together. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot in front of you still, so <laughs> I think you will experience a yeah, lot of that. That's true. Maybe yeah. at the end of the trip, you can point out what has been like your favorite or like your least favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, maybe maybe then I I can sort it out better because right now I'm so close to it that I can't really differentiate 
right now mm-hmm. it's just one experience next experience and yeah as i said it kind of mushes together mm-hmm. yeah i can imagine so let's get to a bit more personal things what keeps you going in, in hard times like when you had a really long day or when you're just in front of the hill having to go up that hill and <laughs> everything <laughs> I I actually don't really know. I I asked myself that question too, and I think uh, I'm I'm really into uh, sports, and I learned very early on that if I don't like doing something in the moment, but it's it's good in general. I'll feel good about whatever I'm doing in like a day or even two or in a week maybe. So I don't really think about doing stuff. I just just do it and then at some point look back. And uh, I'm happy that I didn't stop. So stopping doesn't really come to mind. Mm -hmm. So you never really had the thought of turning around and going back home or like, did you ever miss like a place like home or something? I miss my dog (laughs) (laughs) or our family's dog. That's that's quite hard. But um, I mean, I can talk to my parents. I can talk to my friends. And of course, that's not nearly the same, but it's it's a very good substitute. So right now, I haven't really had too many moments. Maybe on my uh, birthday, for example, that was a strange experience. I didn't spend that alone. I spent that with some guy I met that day from Switzerland. So that was nice not to be alone. But other than that, oh, maybe one more moment in Greece. I turned around the corner and then saw the... A stretch of mountains that I had to cross and uh, felt a little claustrophobic. <laughs> I mean, I was uh, in the ocean, so it wasn't nearly a claustrophobic situation, but just being in the middle of those mountains felt a little uh, dooming almost. Okay. So could you say that it's physical exhaustion or mental exhaustion that you are struggling with more? Or is it maybe both? I mean, the physical exhaustion isn't isn't usually like a very present thing in my mind. I mean, I'm, I get tired, so I just take a break or I go slower or I go faster. And this way I just keep, I usually keep a level of exhaustion. And uh, since I travel so long, that level of exhaustion, which, is, which isn't too high actually, just gets, um, is, is kind of the status quo. So uh, I don't really notice it anymore. I mean, sometimes, of course, if I'm going up a hill, <laughs> that's uh, something that I uh, could curse about a lot. But no, it's usually um, the physical part isn't too, too big of an issue. Mm-hmm. The mental part you ask about, that's a, that's a different thing. Because right now, for example, the cure for physical exhaustion would be taking a break, drinking something at a gas station, having a good night's sleep. And the mental exhaustion, I just found out in Istanbul with you, Marie, <laughs> to, to spend some time with people. To, because I think that's the thing I miss the most. Like being alone all the time and not knowing too many people. That wore down on me a little more than I thought. And after, I think it's been six days in Istanbul, the first three I spent with you and the ne- next uh, last three I spent in a hostel. Yeah. Got to know so many people. Got to know. Got to do some some human things like going out, <laughs> and that felt felt great and uh, definitely replenished my um, my mentality. Mm-hmm. Your next big big part of your journey is going to be Iran. Um, are you excited for that? And what is the first thing you will do? Uh, that's probably the the part that I'm most excited about right now. So I have to get the visa first. I applied for that in Istanbul and hopefully I'll get notification notice if I got it in the next one or two three uh, one or two days. And yeah, I heard so many nice things about Iran. Like the people are uh, supposed to be I, I heard a lot of times the nicest in the world. <laughs> Hard to believe since I got uh, through the Balkans and that was an overwhelming experience of nice people. So um, Iran is, is also so so mystical, so mm-hmm. I wouldn't usually go there on vacation, as you might imagine. And doing that on on my own, like 
going to a country that I usually wouldn't have gone and then on my bike that it's also going to be a very gratifying experience because <laughs> that only happens because I, I pedaled there and that's that's a very very nice nice thought especially after after school where you kind of uh, learn to be independent a little bit more mm -hmm. you were talking about the Balkans what is the story that's like the most impactful the one that you will remember <laughs> in, in 30 years or in 50 years and tell your children <laughs> from I the Balkans like, I feel like you and I know the answer because that's the first story I <laughs> I tell people <laughs> um, so um, there's um, one story in Montenegro. That's the first real Balkan country I went to. And the first country where people were um, just overwhelmingly nice and, and in an honest way too. True, uh, too. And one example of that is <laughs> also <laughs> this story. So I um, uh, slept in the, in the mountains. I uh, just got out of a big city and was crossing into Kosovo. And I had halfway... I uh, was halfway up a mountain and noticed, okay, it's evening. I do not want to do the rest of this mountain now. And um, so I decided to just set up camp uh, next to the road, which was a very, wasn't really a road, <laughs> but some cars <laughs> could drive over it. <laughs> and then at some point, uh, just a little car pulled over and <laughs> we tried to communicate for uh, about 10 minutes. Until we finally said, okay, this isn't this going nowhere, and uh, he left. Then a lorry driver came up, and it's not not like a lorry you'd uh, imagine in uh, Greece or even Macedonia. It's um, it's a very old, very. It's I think in Germany it would be an old timer actually, like a classification for a car. It's called old timer, <laughs> and he started using the same words that that the previous guy used. But I still was like, okay, no, no, sorry, this isn't going anywhere. Have a nice day, but thank you very much. And then after, um, I think an hour, actually, the guy in the lorry returned with a different car. And in that car, there was a man and his nephew. And the nephew was seven years old and uh, could speak a couple words of English. And uh, he basically told me that I was uh, sleeping in grizzly territory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean which isn't too bad I think because they are don't hunt at night as far as I know but uh, definitely uh, enough of a reason not to sleep there anymore especially because I as a naive German did not consider it at all and had <laughs> 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 my leftovers next to my hammock and <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> but, but, but I was a little um little prepared with a, a about pinky sized stick <laughs> that, I, that I put into the ground next to my hammock. <laughs> you were prepared, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I could have could have whipped anybody. <laughs> Not anybody would have whipped anybody. <laughs> a grizzly yeah. for sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so they, uh, the father and the uh, nephew, or the guy and his nephew, they. Um, Uh, <laughs> I mean, first they had a good laugh. <laughs> uh, then they proceeded to help me pack all my stuff and put it in their little car, uh, which actually was a little car, but they made it work. Half of the bike was sticking out and uh, the, nep uh, the nephew was sitting on the guy's na lap. <laughs> and after every everything was packed, the uh, lorry driver <laughs> got into his lorry, got out a bottle of water and, that was, uh, and said to me, like, here, drink in um, in his language but i understood because that's quite universal <laughs> and i saw, thought oh that's that's very nice of him uh, i'd left some water right now <laughs> so i so i took a little swig out of the bottle and <laughs> that was water <laughs> i think mean, i should have known <laughs> <laughs> so about uh, five more minutes we just passed around the bottle of uh, it's called slipovich then went up to the um, their little um, hat on top of the mountain where they proceeded to drink Slibovich with me, give me food. And uh, yeah, actually, they were on hunting trips. So I got to shoot their gun, too, which was uh, very exciting for me. <laughs> But mm -hmm. long story short, I didn't end up getting eaten by grizzlies. I mean, I probably wasn't in too big danger, but didn't get up, uh, end up getting eaten by grizzlies. 
had a nice evening of drinking, had a, a nice bed to sleep in. Uh, he was there with his two brothers, so they slept in one bed, and uh, I got my my own bed, which was. I mean, that's that's just uh, that just tells tells you all you know about those people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you've experienced a lot of hostility and people taking care and <laughs> hospitality, looking after yeah. <laughs> hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> Some hostility too, but uh, mostly hospitality. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sounds great. Let's continue. Um, lastly, would you recommend going on a bike tour that long? Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I mean, um, I think it's easier than. Uh, most people think because uh, most of the adaptations you go through uh, or that you have to the changes that you have to make you have to make in the moment so you can't really prepare for it I mean unless you do little tours and then prepare that way for a big tour but uh, the the sacrifices you have to make also after a while seem a little smaller like at the beginning it was very strange uh, sleeping uh, outside and even sleeping alone in the forest was strange, and now it's it's no problem at all. I can uh, I can just sleep next to a road <laughs> with no problem, and I would not have done that in the beginning of the trip. So uh, most of the sacrifices you have to make, they get smaller, and you get used to stuff, and it's it's just all around an amazing experience, as you can as you can imagine. Yeah, I can imagine too from what I've heard so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Yuri, for joining me today. We wish you all the best on the rest of your adventure. And yeah, thank you very much. Uh, soon in Iran. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully. And then further. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to say goodbye. Ciao, ciao. Goodbye.